Okay, so I'd like to take a minute to go over the items uh, in the properties panel. And that's not to be confused with the property shelf. If I hit T, then that brings up my property shelf over here and my tool shelf over here. I'll hit T to collapse those. But um, as we spoke about before, uh, this properties panel is um, one of these 17 different editor types. And so if we start out, uh, this little camera icon is the render tab. And this contains um, all your information about uh, rendering in your scene. If we expand this uh, render tab here, you see you have the option to render an image, render your animation, or play the animation um, that you rendered. So in the 3D viewport, if I hit zero, that pops us into the perspective of the camera. And whenever you hit render, that's going to render a 2D image um, from the perspective of the camera in the 3D view. So if I uh, rotate this camera around, and then I click render here, that is going to send that render into, the, um, into my UV image editor. And if I hit tilde key, the little squiggly line key under the escape, I can maximize that this window and I can zoom in and out of it by scrolling uh, backwards and forwards and we see that render there. Then I hit tilde key to um, uh, minimize that window. Um, so moving down the line here, you have uh, um, layers and this controls which layers um, in the scene to be rendered. And currently, I only have one object in one layer here. Um, let's say I pop on over to this layer. If I hit Shift A and brings up my add menu and add a uh, UV sphere, um, now we have an object, a sphere in this layer and a cube in this layer. And if I hit Shift on both of them, uh, then they'll both show up. However, <laughs> the sphere is inside the cube. So I'll hit G to grab the sphere, move it over. And, but we could control under the layers um, which object we want to be rendered or not here. So moving down, you have the dimensions um, that you want this to render out at. So I have it set up to render by 12 to 1280 by 720, which is um, standard high def for YouTube. Um, it's not quite real uh, HD, which is 1920 by 1080 but um, provides a, um, a great medium between really high quality and manageable file sizes you, to work with um, and uh, looks really great on Vimeo and YouTube and stuff. But say I set these to render out at 1920, hit tab to go down and hit by 1080 and hit enter. You can see, as you can see, um, we're in the, in the camera's uh, perspective that that as I was typing it, that changed the size of the um, camera output. But um, you have this percentage control under here. Say I had a very complex scene and I went on render and I hit render. And now uh, this, this went fast enough because it's a very simple little scene here. Uh, but say I had a very complex scene and um, I just wanted a quick uh, preview of it. I could cut the render size in half if I drop it to 50% here. And that way I get a smaller resolution picture, but it, it goes much faster. And I don't have to worry about figuring out the exact math in my head. I can just control it by percentage. So I'll change that back to 1280 by 720, which is what I keep it on by default. And so moving down, um, we have anti-aliasing on, which um, you can see these kind of jagged edges on this cube. Um, anti-aliasing provides the smoothing of those edges. So if I like view this, um, you can see the render, the edges here are much smoother than in the viewport, and that's provided by the anti-aliasing, and you can increase the level that it um, does there. And then sampled motion blur, uh, you just check mark that to add motion blur to your scene. Um, however, I um, it's can be quite resource heavy when you're doing a long animation, so I typically use a uh, a vector blur setup in the node editor uh, through compositing, which um, we'll get into that later. But um, 
you can control under shading you can control what kind of uh, items to render, like textures, if you want the shadows to render or not, and ray tracing. Under performance controls, um, type of acceleration structure used, how many threads or processors used in the render, um, which depending on whether you use uh, GPU rendering or CPU uh, might, might vary, but typically it's on most of the settings in Blender are set to auto, and they do a fairly good job of, of figuring out what your system's uh, best um, ability to render is. And under the performance tab we have the post processing which controls whether or not um, the image you render or the animation goes to um, the compositing uh, sequence and that's kind of what I was talking about before. I said I usually don't check the motion blur. Uh, this motion blur because it's very resource heavy. I use um, if I switch, if I go down to where my UV image editor is here and I switch it to the node editor, um, and I'll see, I'll hit tilde key to maximize this. And if I select node tree type, you can see um, this is the um, motion blur, uh, vector blur thing I have set up to create kind of a faux motion blur, but that's much less resource heavy. And you can actually do a lot of really great stuff. Um, in the uh, with compositing with the the node editor, uh, very Photoshop like stuff, um, just in a kind of a different visual format, and save a lot of resources. And we'll get in that later. I'll hit tilde key to minimize that. Switch this back to the UV image editor, and um, also right here this edge option. Um, let's see if I select it and I hit. F12, which is the uh, shortcut for render, um, you can see, I'll hit tilde key, that it has produced this edge around my uh, render, around my objects. And if you can set up your shading actually in Blender uh, to where it's flat, and combined with this option, uh, you can make kind of cool 2D cell shaded animation, uh, which is pretty neat. And so you have the stamp option, which this is basically like um, if you've ever seen like an old um, video recording and it has like uh, like the little record button in the corner and the time and date and stuff. Um, or you can stamp it with like copyright by da 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 if you, if you don't want anyone ripping off your raw footage for some reason. Um, under the output tab, output tab is very important. Here is where you set up where you want your renders or your animations to be saved. So you would click this, um, say you just uh, finished an animation in Blender, you would click this icon here and you would either navigate through your hard drive or your desktop and then you would choose a folder you wanted and name what you wanted your animation to be, click accept, and then under your render tab, whenever you render or render the animation, it will save to the file that you just chose here. And also in the output, you choose whether you want it to the image to render as a PNG, uh, bump map, JPEG, or whatever, um, or the movie type to be AVI, H.264, MPEG. And I typically use um, H.264 codec. It's actually, that's the codec that uh, Blu-ray uses. And just to just because I do a lot of stuff in Blender and animation and stuff, um, AVI RAW is a is the a lossless format, and that means that it is there is no codec translation in your video. So the highest quality possible is AVI RAW. However, the file sizes are quite huge and can be uh, kind of hard to edit with and and do different things with. So I typically just save it out directly as H.264 or um, if I'm doing some effects with it later I may save it as a PNG sequence but if I've just created a little animation I want to use I use H.264. Um, so uh, finally we have the bake tab and the bake tab is used to handle or manage uh, information flow in Blender um, kind of to reserve uh, preserve some of your resources 
um, by baking certain effects such as uh, bump maps or um, lighting, different type of effects so that they can be called upon uh, without so much memory being used up. And that's sure that sounds pretty confusing, but we'll get into that later. Uh, by the render tab, uh, you have the uh, scene tab, which contains information about your scene, um, what camera is being rendered through. Currently, we only have, if you look in the outliner, I only have one camera in the whole scene, so it, it's only going to render through this one. But if we had multiple cameras, we might select which one to render through um, on the scene here. You have an audio tab um, for uh, setting up audio in Blender, which I typically don't do my audio in Blender. I use you know, a, another program. Uh, you can change the units from, I have none, which is actually like the default Blender units. You can change it though to metric. Um, as you can see, it pops up here, meters, or imperial, which is the feet, which imperial is like feet, inches. The good old Queens system. Um, I'll keep it on none. Gravity here controls the um, your global gravity for uh, different various physics effects and um, uh, particle simulations and the like. And as you can see, um, currently I have the camera selected. So there is now a camera uh, icon that pops up in my properties panel. And that is because um, a properties panel is is relevant to the object you have selected. So if I select this cube, I have uh, different various information that pops up as opposed to if I had this uh, camera selected. So I'll click back on the cube. And um, uh, so going down the scene tab, we have gravity and uh, color management, um, which is some pretty advanced stuff, and I, I typically don't, don't use that. And you can also set up uh, uh, custom properties here. Um, these are uh, related to, these custom properties are related to the add-ons that I have installed or not.